the Tidebringer cleaves, potentially. We hope so, but we'll have to see. I think both side lanes are going to be very difficult here as well, as we do have a tree Lena lane. Extremely difficult for Lycan here to get anything out of that. And then the off lane, of course. Saberlight did get his last pick Slardar here against the Lifestealer. Just a classic counter pick matchup. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, synergy on the side of Rebellion when you think about the Slardar. You've got the Lena on your lineup. That's a lot of minus armor into physical damage. But there's also a pretty, pretty nice little uh, one-shot combo as well when you think about Hoodwink with the Sharpshooter, Laguna Blade from Lena. You can just evaporate even a Lycan off of the face of the Earth right away. So pretty cool stuff for Rebellion. But is there is there any hope for Bait? You know, when you looked at the odds, it didn't look very, very favorable towards them. Oh, there's always going to be hope. You just got to make your own, uh, like, uh, openings in this game. I think Funic here really has to do a lot of work. He has to be able to survive the RTC fly lane, which so far not many teams have been able to overcome. So that's going to be a lane I'm really looking at, and we're going to see as well, can Stonebank deal with the Saber Light Slardar, as that is one of the harder lanes for the Lifestealer. Things can get ugly, and they can get ugly fast. Already getting a bit of a touchdown ground here, basically, with the... Uh Arteezy and Fly, they got the LSA stun to connect onto the Rubik and get themselves that bounty rune squeezing between. So three for one in favor for Rebellion and heading over to the laney stage. And as we have a bit of a moment here, we got the chance to talk with Mr. Dendy as well. And he's got some ideas about some game changes potentially. If we watch at Dota like from a higher perspective, I don't think the game is getting changed too much in the last three years. Like because the map and economic system kind of stays almost the same. So like I'm, if you ask me, I'm waiting for huge changes. It's going to change a lot of things, you know, like, because for example, I think some steps could be done in the direction of making the game more like skill oriented. I think it would make more people happier playing the game because it would be more skill rewarded in a way. Pretty interesting thoughts there from Dendi, and uh, what do you think about that fear? I mean, he's just saying he wants to stomp kids mid again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's uh, not enough skill base. He wants to be able to outplay and carry the team. It seems like uh, that's what's been missing for him and his play. That is, uh, that is unfortunately true. Not had a lot of success so far on the side of Bates. Still looking for that series victory for themselves. Able to, been, able to squeeze those map threes a couple times, but... Uh, Yesterday wasn't the case. Maybe today against the toughest opponent, maybe they arise to the occasion. But uh, so far, so good. Everybody is uh, getting their CS on the board at least. But it, what, what do you think about this uh, this bot lane matchup? If we think about Funny going on the like and Fly, oh. meanwhile, looking for moves, and he's got the first blood. I did mention that this lane was going to be probably very difficult, and he just disconnects immediately after dying there. <laughs> Lag. Okay. Well, either yep. way, this matchup, it's a very, very tough matchup. Like, you have the Train Protector. We've seen in the other regions. I guess at the beginning of the DPC here, too, we kept talking about it, like how strong this hero is. It hasn't had the best results, but if I'm not mistaken, this may be Fly's first game on this hero. And we all know the RTZ Fly combination and that safe lane extremely strong lane like just players mm. not even heroes very like, polished yeah they're very very good at what they do here and then not only that is that tree like one of the strongest boss fives they got the lena carry that yeah. is the strongest boss one and laning hero as well so funic really has his hands full with this laning stage here even though they did get the rubik for moose but moose has already got first blooded so yeah. not even that has been helping him a lot of strong perks on the side of this bot lane for Rebellion and even Funic. He's currently holding on to just one CS, so he's gonna need those levels to get himself up to speed and have the have the activeness of the zero. So a bit of trading of the top lane, Stone Bank on this uh, on this life stealer. He's not having the greatest time either here against Crit and Saberlight, just making sure that this life stealer is gonna be aiming, taking up a lot of damage whenever he shows up. But at least when you think about the uh, the matchup, um, for sure. You always got to be a bit careful about where you're going to be ending up. Saberlight would love to punish you. And you want to look for a good HP regen trade versus Lifestealer because he can still get something back out of the Slardar at least. But right now it just feels like uh, Bait is a bit on the receiving end. 15 and 2 on Slardar to 5 and 1 of yep. Lifestealer. It's not pretty. And if you thought that was bad, you know, mid lane, 14 and 3 to the 7 4 of Dendi. And if you thought that was bad, <laughs> Arteezy on the Lina. <laughs> 13 and 8 to the 4 and 1. Like this, 
is a beatdown right now. Yeah. An yep. absolute beatdown. It's three minutes into the game, and I'm sure they're pretty close to a 2K advantage at this point here. Yeah, as the overseer of the salt mines has basically arrived to bring it with all the all the bucket loads of salt here. But not looking too great. Lowdown, he's found crit, or has crit found lowdown here. It's gonna be an honest 1v1 battle here with the Hoodwick and the and the clockwork. Not going to really lead into anything here. Saberlight's just going to stick around in the lane. Doesn't really need his help around here. He's got the wave in front of the tower, so all good in terms of lane tranquility. Yeah, I mean, Dendi actually recovered pretty well. He's now beating Abed. He must have had a huge wave under tower there, yeah. getting a bunch of CS, so good recovery there. One thing that I thought was pretty interesting is that Abed will take a little damage here, but I don't think much will come of this. Yeah, at least trying to maximize the damage output here for the, uh, for the Edict. Yeah, Some but he's that. actually not going the build of getting the Voodoo or Restoration, Malthus, right? He's kind of going like the support build. Yeah. Bit of a catch there. Crit and Saberlight finding themselves a kill. Funic currently hiding in the trees. Doesn't want to make him uh, make his presence known for the time being. He's forced to last it with wolves, but there's a tree and he's just hammering down the wolves. Get out of this lane. I mean, look at Tree CS. He's 9-1 yeah. to Funic's... <laughs> five and one <laughs> CS right now. The boss five is out farming Funic here. That is not a good sign here. One thing I did want to mention mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. It's it's a meta evolution. Like the Slardar in the top lane and the Life Stealer, they got Wraith bands. Like before, you'd be it'd be like you know buy a bracer, but like everyone's like really buying these Wraith bands. They're buying mangoes like for the laning stage. Some of the stronger items of the patch right now. Pulling themselves off to a uh, quick 2k lead. Can they get the Lena Courier? Yes, they can. That's going to be the Falcon Blade slowed down by at least over a minute. And that will be uh, out of uh, Arteezy's hands. But right now, he's not really struggling with uh, with this mana region. Almost full mana pool currently. And not getting to trade a lot against Funic. Fly's been doing basically all the all the work by himself right now. Moose. I mean, fun shenanigans. depends on your definition of work. He's kind of getting worked in this lane right now. <laughs> As Arteezy doesn't need to use any mana, yep. as he's just kind of CSing. Yeah, it's kind of a positive scene for sure. Nice cogs there from Lona. It does cancel out the stun from Saberlight. No extra damage dealt onto Stonebank. Currently sitting at 13 CS versus the 35 on Saberlight. And that's just going to continue getting worse and worse. At least he's holding off on XP, but right now in the mid lane, Abed, he's got Moose and Dendi. Actually, Dendi is pretty low on HP, but Abed, he's in a much more worse situation and ends up dropping Moose before the kill. Saberlight also fairly low here, considering can they still go into the tower? Bash is loaded up on the Slardar. Pretty heavy hit there onto the Clockwork by Lodan. He's unfazed. I mean, you wouldn't have it any other way if you're a bait fan. Everything is on the back of Dendi here in that mid lane. Pretty much the only hero in this game that actually has a game. And he's yep. doing really well. So he's been now looking for the kill here. They're able to look for Lodine inside his own cogs. Crit to steal it there with the acorn shot. And that will be another one for Rebellion. Make it up to three. At least Bait is uh, somewhat still holding on. They're going to have to find themselves an opening at least to relieve the pressure out of this game. Is it the Witch Doctor rotating? Or are they just going to go full on five man stack with the first shapeshift available for Funic? When are we going to get to level six? That's a whole nother question because right now, just sitting at level four in the solo lane, though, oh, they've got Moose coming in for the back and RTC going to get caught. Dendi with the rotation. They've got the coconut to connect. And with a fade bolt, Moose will take this one. RTC punished. It's the Dendi show. Look at this guy. He's like one mid lane. We didn't expect it. I mean, Moose is now like finding his rhythm in this game too, ganking mid lane, killing Abed. I'm not sure if Moose made that call bottom, he may have, but calling Dendi there with the lift onto Arteezy there, really yep. good plays. Uh, unfortunately, I must say though, like as good as these plays are, they still have a big problem in net worth mm -hmm. right now as Dendi, he's actually not even beating Kunkka in net worth, even though mm -hmm. he's had a couple good kills. The CS looks good, but it looks like he's just buying a lot of consumables to like survive, right? In this laning stage here. Yeah, looking at the uh, the net worth as well, which Doctor is holding on to a position here. It can ramp up that uh, malediction damage that can ramp up pretty early. It does somewhat counteract uh, itself with the with the rum buff from Abed, at least if he gets to use it. But he's down a half HP right now. And there is the ulti ready for Dendi. Just come off cooldown, crit, but the rotation is going to be the one to tank the damage. Oh, but he's very low on HP, but they run out of the malediction and now fly rotating in. Moose will drop and Dendi to follow. Rebellion, they get the response into an orbit, gets to keep his hide intact. This is what they're so good at, at responding in this like 
mid game, not mid, kind of late early games, I guess you'll call it. Like their supports are so fast. <laughs> well, esports bet on Isle says there is there is no chance. There's a solid 100 for Rebellion, so they don't have they haven't seen Dendi Witch Doctor before, so uh, they don't have the faith for it right now. The Cogs come out from low down. They're gonna catch Abed inside it. They do have the damage in the end. The Cogs pushing out as well, preventing Abed from doing anything. And now the body blocks onto fly. Moose just have to rely on basic right clicks here. They still have telekinesis available. They got the right. fade ball. Just comes a cooldown. And that will sort them out for two kills. Though they're gonna have to come with a trade. It's gonna be Dendi falling in the river. Hmm, interesting. I wonder what Dendi is trying to do up there. It's like very difficult to gank this lifestealer, I feel. I wanted to kind of go back to the laning stage a little bit on Stonebank, mm. his choice to play Lifestealer this game. When Saber Light's hero wasn't chosen yet, mm -hmm. he's laning with a clockwork, right? And it kind of just gave Saber Light the freest game of his life. He's playing Slaughter versus two melee heroes here. So I, it's kind of coming back to bite them here, choosing like not to play a ranged hero with this clockwork five. It definitely hasn't been a solid beginning on the side of bait for this safe lane now Saberlight picks up the Midas that's gonna be a nine minute Midas fairly early timed he's gonna ramp up his farm and XP even further from here well Abed smoked up with Fly heading towards the bottom lane they're looking to kill maybe Funic maybe catch Moose off guard he's gonna pop Fly smoke but do they know about the Kunker right now they don't have the exact vision but the wolf is gonna spot Kunker and that rotation won't lead into a kill, at least for now. What they're doing really nice, though, as you'll see in the mid lane, that they're not wasting anything. Mm. But Lodine, in the meantime, yep. may just be dead. He oh, look at that bash. Yep. That is damage. Yeah, that is a world of hurt. <laughs> yeah, but what I was going to say there is, like, even though they're making rotation, all right, hold on, oh, Dendi. Dendi might need some help here. They've got TPs rotating in from Moose. He's got the raindrops that will soak some of the damage. Push back on a two, and the Sharpshooter is going to be finishing off the Rubik and Dendi to follow. And they just don't have anything to respond with. Losing the clockwork earlier, just having nobody else to back him up there. Dendi with another death now. And Witch Doctor's net worth hasn't moved anywhere in three minutes. This is what uh, Shopify Rebellion is really good at, playing around this mid lane. Abed may have struggled a little bit in the laning stage, but after that, they just keep bringing heroes. They're tri laning mid, while the side lanes are both free farming with a Midas. And, you know, Lena doesn't need a Midas, but going to be farming fast regardless. Yep. One team making plays and the other one just forced to respond to every move currently. But Lodine wants to do something about it. He's got the hook shot, got fly inside it. Crit He's trying to catch Dendi on the side. They do get the torrent to cancel out the the war from Dendi. So no extra damage in. And now with the bushwhack and the sharpshooter and the combo from the X. Do they have torrent available? Overgrowth is being used as well in the river. Fly, he's in trouble. The wolves are currently gnawing at this tree's feet and take him down. Now Crit also in a bit of trouble, surrounded by bait heroes. And this one actually ends up being a, you could almost say, Rebellion with a bit of a, bit of a uh, optimistic moment. They're looking for some easy kills, end up losing two supports in the end. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Shopify Rebellion is... I mean, both teams are okay with this, honestly, because yeah, they're for, still for bait, they're just like, yeah, we got some kills, we got some, some momentum, but for Shopify, they're like, ah, Slaughter's still free farming, yeah, Lena's still yeah. free farming. They basically brought five heroes from yep. bait to, like, accomplish that, so a little bit of uh, morale for bait, but strategically, Shopify, they're not going to slow down. Currently untouched. With this uh, Slardar topping net worth, Arteezy, despite that one death early on, earlier on in the lane, he's still uh, close to that uh, 6k net worth. Off to a great start on Alina. So even with that Falcon Blade uh, sniped off of the Courier, don't really uh, have much of an impact onto him. And Stonebank, we're going to have to need something from this Lifestealer. Fairly soon, right now. The, the, the thing is, when you're playing these Life Stealer lineups, you don't want to be playing from too far behind. Can they actually get Saberlight down here? Yes, they can. With Dendi rotating in again, Lodan and Dendi. Yeah, I think <laughs> Saberlight there was uh, being a little aggressive. I think those are one of those just, deaths. Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> I think those are one of your deaths where you're just kind of like really feeling yourself. And you're like, all right, I gotta, I gotta chill out a little bit now. Well, but we'll see if he does. As Dendi's traveling across the globe here. Yep, all the way from East Europe, North America, and now are all, all around the map. Is it, it actually just might be enough? Nah, bye. Goodbye, Abed. <laughs> Dong. Or gong, rather. <laughs> Either way, that tolls, tolls the end of his life. Nine to eight, but still a 5k lead for Rebellion here. 
these uh, early minutes. Now that the, uh, the laning stage has come to an end, a lot of movement around the map. They've, they've lost all their tier ones on the side of bait. They don't want to start losing those tier twos too early. Also, the Roche potential, which you have to keep in mind for Rebellion. You've got Slardar, you have Lina, Kunkka. These are uh, pretty solid heroes to take that Roche early. Or did he learn his lesson? Did he? Oh. Maybe he's not expecting the X, but either way, he's a little in trouble here. He's got crit right next to him. They are slowly draining down this uh, Slardar, but do they get the kill in the end? Crit actually forces them away with that quick sharpshooter. Looking for a kill for himself here with the bushwhack. Almost enough damage and the minus armor from the app, app damage. It's not enough to take down Lord. It actually just runs out as the acorn shot connects and Stonebank. He's going to find himself a kill. It really feels like Shopify is really trying to push their limits as players there, to say it the best way I can. Moose, he did a really good job there. He stole X, right? Yep. He stole amp damage, put it on him. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, this lifestyle right now, he provides little to no damage. And Slaughter just walks it out. Crit didn't have to die there, but he was going for the highlight reel there. He was trying to swag on him. And unfortunately, with that stolen amplified damage there, there was no hiding in the trees for him. Still the uh, BKB now being uh, built up on this Lina. Actually had Boots of Travel there for a second lined up, but instead opted to go for the immunity, which might make a lot of sense right now. Ortiz in trouble, does get the stick heal coming out, but he's still gonna fall, and Dendi to follow suit after. Oh, but with the DD, look at that. Oh, the x part's gonna bring him back right into the arms of the Kunkka. Make sure it's gonna be a one-two trade. They got the Lina. Yeah, I did. But at what cost? <laughs> I will say though, Dendi say and ahead. Moose, Go ahead. they're they're owning. Dendi and Moose are playing out of their mind right now, mm. and like they're making ganks happen. Moose stole the Laguna Blade there, killed Arteezy with it. Like on the top lane, they got crit, almost got Saber Light. They're making things happen on the map, and you know we were talking about before on the panel how yep. Dendi is like mid game. Sometimes he just you don't see his presence, but he's here this game, and we're seeing him. But we're not seeing a lot of Stonebank and Phonic, though. Well, well we're not going to see him alive for sure at the moment. They do block out the Sharpshooter. He did have Rage up on Stonebank, but still tanked by Lodine. He's very low on HP. App damage is going to show where he's going to be moving. Lodine's going to have to tank the Ghost Ship. And now Moose TPing in. He's got the stolen amp on Saberlight. Dendi for the cancel, just in time. Dendi and Moose, what do you know? Name a more dynamic duel. Oh, you can't. <laughs> impossible. Oh, uh, this chase is going to take some time. And do they actually find the kill in the end? Well, the tower is going to help out. And with the malediction, it's going to tick down to zero. Dendi with another. Dendi 2, 4, and 6 currently on this uh, Witch Doctor. He's got the shards. He's got Ghost Scepter lined up. Wants to make sure that the Slardar doesn't just blow him up right away at the start. Because you get that one stun or that one bash hit to the follow-up Slithering Crush. The you're going to be in big trouble. A crit. Yeah, we can't get him. Or can they? Ooh. That they coconut heal? actually does a lot oh. of damage there. <laughs> <laughs> the malediction on top of it. I mean, this is so dendy. Like, I remember and they back tip in the each day. other. Yeah. And they tip each other. Come on, Dendi. Give, I mean, give Moose a tip. Yeah, really like, cool. remember back in the day, his Shadow Fiend, super popular. Yeah. He would go Brown Boots Blink Dagger, right? Yeah, yeah. And this is just a build you see on... Maybe you can argue a Tiny might do this. Uh -huh. But even then, they probably don't. They get the Phase Boots. They get something else. But, like, Brown Boots Blink. This is quintessential Dendi. Yep. And love to see that he's actually making it work in this game. You love to see it. Oh, boy. That 5k net worth has actually uh, stayed still for the last four minutes. Does that really give us any indicator currently? Bates actually pushing into items. They're getting kills here and there. They're training off of support for uh, a couple pickoffs. And they're, they're, they're keeping up a pace. Like, this game is not sliding away from their hands, or is it? Uh, I mean, it's... They stabilized, right? That's the best way to put it. They're not like in a winning position or anything, but they're making cool plays and they're making it in in interesting for us. But unfortunately, that Ooh. hook was not super interesting as he did miss. And it looks like he'll pay his life for it. Let's see. He's got the life stealer inside. So, you know, Kinder surprise. Let's go. <laughs> They've got themselves to trapped inside Clog Saberlight. Still holding on to his life for now. But that Maledict should seal the deal for him. So he's gone. That's going to be the first casualty bait. He did use shapeshift for it. He's already down to half. Can they get anything out of this? Any pressure onto the tier one? Looks like they're just going to let this one slide. Play it easy. They're pretty low on a couple of heroes. Moves down to 500. Don't want to make any unnecessary risks. Yeah, that was a debate hook. Just gave him a false sense of security. He tried to turn it. And then guess who's waiting yeah. there? Classic. Oh, they effed up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. 
But Arteezy, though, I haven't seen much from him as we normally don't in the first 20 minutes. That's usually mm -hmm. his time to just kind of like no surprises. Get, get his items, right? But <laughs> yep. he's got his items now. He's ready to oh. play the game. Dire Phase scan two. actually catches crit. Crit catches two heroes with the bushwhack and Saberlight. Is that the go sign? He's got the blink ready. Blink stun. Lowdown already puts down the preemptive cogs. I think Dendi's gotten to his head. He's died too many times on the slaughter to this witch doctor, so he's thinking twice now before making yeah. these jumps. So that's already good. Like a mental advantage here or saber light might be maybe not shook, but he's respecting mm. them now. Yeah, and now they're gonna start Roshan. So uh, Bates gonna wait. What? Oh, that? Oh, okay. Dendi's foot was in the way. Unlucky. Yep. So they're gonna finish off this Roshan pretty quickly here. Amp damage and Lena talked about this right click damage. Roshan basically with uh, minus armor currently right now, so that's going to be fast. And an 18 minute Aegis picked up for RTZ, so maybe now we get to see some more RTZ. He's got the security of a second life. Yeah, I mean, he just finished his BKB. The yep. next call is, you know, go Rosh, and now he wants to play the game. Yep, and now they're going on Dendi. That's the target they want to get. Bit of a vendetta for uh, Shopify Rebellion taking down Dendi. And instant smoke right after that, and they want more. They're hungry for blood right now. Nobody in the top side of the map, unfortunately. It was just Moose protecting the tier 2 tower, pushing out the wave. Bottom is pushed in by Funic right now, so they're just going to have to suffice with a pickoff. But hey, if it's Stonebank, isn't that a great way to start things off here? He's already getting blown up right away by Saberlight and Abed. He does have a DD rune, goes inside Funic, and the shapeshift. He do need to find a way out, though. That's 3,000 HP. They're going to burst through Funic. They've already made their way halfway, Funic. This is the call to just make the decision. We're gonna run out. Lodine, thank you for the sacrifice. We get to keep our carry. Abed's not done with the chase, though. Surely he can't catch a wolf in ultimate form, right? Surely. Unless, <laughs> unless, oh, oh, it's okay. Arteezy. That might just be the ages. They've got the voodoo switcheroo. We're not gonna catch you with the LSA stun. And they're already stacked up here with Rebellion, so they're happy just burning out the Aegis Arteezy. Losing that security, but Fly goes for the overgrowth. He's caught Dendi. Dendi gonna be the target, the public enemy number one. Blown up as RTZ secures the kill with the Dragon Slave. Level one Dragon Slave. Yeah, who? A bit of chaos, would you say? Yeah, I mean, who needs it? Just get stats. That yeah. spell isn't very good. If you're there for the right clicks, you're not there for the magical damage, so. Hmm. I don't mind it at all. Definitely need to level a stun though, because it does add duration to the stun. I would say you're griefing if you don't level that up, but I don't mind the level one dragon slave here into stats. Totally fine yep. with it. Yeah, that is the uh, that is the build to go for. I was just kind of thinking about the situation, like wouldn't Saberlight uh, deserve this kill? You know, he's been <laughs> killed by the same guy over and over again. Maybe it's his turn now to return the favor. 8,000 gold, so that is slowly but surely increasing on the side of Rebellion. And X mark stolen by Moose. Right into the bushwhack. Oh, sharpshooter. Oak shot. That's going to cancel him out for a second. And Stonebank doesn't even need to catch the sharpshooter. It's going to miss completely. Boat doesn't quite finish off Moose. Would have been dead otherwise. Yeah, it's starting to see like all these teams really prioritize having a Greaves on your team, right? The Slardar, not a hero that traditionally will buy Greaves here. So Crit is just taking up the role of buying Greaves for his team. So I, I like the choice, and it just kind of just shows like where the meta is at. Like you mm -hmm. kind of want these support items, the four staffs, the greaves, something like that in your lineup on your supports here. Not going for a greedier build. I see a lot of hoodwinks try to go for like you know the shard into maybe an e blade and try to be like the carry here, but he's just playing his role. Yep, it does nullify the physical damage output from bait, which majorly is that the life stealer, witch doctor, ulti, and the lichen. Extra armor is always going to be handy. Speaking of the Lycan, though, it's mm. like... Haven't seen too much out of Funic here. I remember that one fight yep. in the mid lane. He killed two supports, all right? Funic, double kill on the roll here. They early picked this to counter pick the Lina, but yep. it unfortunately feels like he's in a position now that even if he gets on top of Arteezy, mm. you know that Satanic is coming soon, and when he finishes that, I think he just loses the man fight to Lina, and that's just not a spot you want to be at as a Lycan. Yeah, and this is, this is the Funic that we've actually been seeing quite a lot uh, during the course of this diff one. The only thing I see different in his player portrait, or his camera more like, he's wearing a hood this time. So you think that's going to give him some extra confidence? More <laughs> focus mode? Yeah, I mean, maybe for next game, but <laughs> this one, unfortunately, you've missed your timing on Lycan. And this is not a hero that you can magically come back with. Like, you can, you, 
still win the game. It's possible. You build the auras and you just got to hope someone carries you. But who hmm. are you looking at? Dendi, he can't do anymore. He's already made as much space again. So you're looking at your carry, Stonebank. But unfortunately, he has also been having a rough game. So yep. uh, you hate to say it, but as good of a game Dindy's having, it looks rough. It's going from possible to plausible. Mm -hmm. Going to dodge the LSA stun of Saberlight going for the initiation out. And Dendi's going to be blown up right away at the start of the fight. And they won't look for any extra kills, but the shapeshift used by Funic. He's trying to hunt down Crit here with the zoo. But Artiz, he's there to help him out. Also, the loaded up sharpshooter there. Could have held on for a bit longer there, but now Saberlight. Is this another false sense of security move? Because Fly, he's already making a move in four staff in one second, but he didn't have it up as he needed it. And Funic will be taken down in the end. Crit, Abed, RTZ, the gang train. Continue to follow the wolf. Now with the overgrowth, they're going to catch themselves low down inside the cogs. Not going to go anywhere. Crit's already making a, a pincer move on the side, trying to hunt down moves. But Fly will fall to Stonebank. But Rage has been used up. You've got no protection, son. Going to get X marked up. The torrent. Not sure if that was a Rubik torrent, but they Moose do get a stun onto it too. Moose is really making some big plays. And Dindy, he's back to action. Coconut bouncing back and forth. They take down Arteezy. They take down Crit. And Abed, he's going for the TP away. Is he going to be able to? Moose, he does not have an X mark stolen. So that is going to be Abed getting out of that. But a good turnaround from Bait. And Dindy. He's getting some uh, some hype, some hope for um, for the side of fate here. Moose and Dendi. And what Moose. more can we say? Moose, Moose was doing Dendi. so much work in that fight. He stole the Light Strike Array there. He got the two-man stun that set up for the Coconut Chain stun into, yeah, the Death Ward there. So, wow. Uh, they're they're doing all they can, honestly. But, like, it just feels so bad with the way they drafted here that I just don't know when this Lycan is going to yeah. come online here. And yet, here we go. Beautiful. Like, the connection time. Everything Dynam lands at the same time. Duel. And with that Silver Edge, he's trying to run away, but that is just going to be way too much tick damage. Oh, it's a drop. He already survived the fight once, but round two was too much. Apparently, Saberlight misses the stun on Stonebank. He's able to move out, and here comes Dendi. And what about Moose? He actually doesn't get the LSA to connect because of the BKB, but they've got the hook shot. And Saberlight, he's already forced away from the fight. And that is no BKB down bait. They've already crawled 2k net worth together from that 8k lead on the side of Rebellion. At least they're holding onto this tier one tower for now, but for how long? For how long? Here we go, we've got the ulti drop down, and Dendi in the front line, RTZ in trouble, but they do have a lot of heroes standing on the spot with the overgrowth, and RTZ down, it goes to Saberlight as well. And Rebellion losing heroes left, right, and center. Lowdown will tick down to the Bushwhack, and they finish off the tier one tower. Bait. Two successful team fights in a row, and they've crawled 5k together. It's only a 3k lead now for Rebellion. What is going on? Is it just Moose and Dendi, or is it just Moose and Dendi? <laughs> uh, it might be Dendi and Moose. Dendi and Moose, that's, that's a good <laughs> option. That's a good option. I'll go with that. No, I mean, I was worried about like the other heroes coming online, but they're back. Stonebank is now second to net worth here, and you see the Lena here. She is a very squishy hero, so if Lifestyle does manage to get on top of you, you can die. And... Stonebank doing the damage in this fight, but you do still always have to give credit here to Moose, always setting it up. Dendi coming in with the clutch coconuts and the death wards. So yep. how many times are they going to get away with this? I feel like I've been watching Moose and Dendi just everywhere they walk, they make something happen. And oh. Stonebank is basically caught up in net worth with this Lena. That is absolutely insane. Yep, this is this has been wild. One thing, this game was a 1-0-0 odd for Rebellion. <laughs> has that changed at all for esportsbet.io? Because I'm curious. I'm I'm legit curious right now. Has Bait been given some hope? But uh, we'll we'll find that out in a second. Lodine already dropped fairly low from that sharpshooter burst there from Rebellion, and they finish off the tower. Funic getting the bottom tier two and opening up the map. Nope, no sir, <laughs> it has not changed. It is it is still staying, staying the same, but for Bates, at least they're getting some hope, some hopium. Is there some hopium going on in chat or something? Because uh, I sense it, I they're, sense it. They're winning this game in my eyes. Oh, wow. Like, they're just straight up winning this game. Like, the ball's in their court. Lina is not a hero that you want to be equal in net worth with other heroes with. Manta is online for Lyster. Now he can get out of that overgrowth from the Treant Protector. Mm -hmm. I think at some point, Lodin and the uh, Stonebank need to make an infest combo 
onto this Lina, right? It's always been Moose, it's always been Dendi, but the other guys, they're gonna have to show up real soon, and they're in a good position to do so here, too. There's definitely been uh, something going on at the start of this game, or at least with their pre-game rituals, when you think about Moose, because uh, I know all about how Mongolian throat singing can push you into that battle hunger, but there's something maybe in uh, in Peru that has been influenced him at the start of this game. Boys, we're gonna win this one, and I'm gonna unite with the, with the legend, Make sure that they're gonna make things happen. And they're actually pushing high ground here while Rebellion. They've got heroes in the triangle. They've got Saberlight trying to farm in the top half of the map. But at least they have to train it to keep these towers off for a little bit longer. So uh, high ground push is gonna be difficult. But Roche number two. Roche is waiting in his pit. We've got a smoke. Well done. He's got the, the infested life stealer and they find the overgrowth target. That's gonna be one piece of the team fight taken away if they can. Chris gonna be a second one as well. Bait finding two pick offs again. The supports fall in the sight of them, and that Roshan is now ripe for the picking. So who would have guessed that Bait was gonna be the team? Not to mm. cast her person to be the team. To yeah, take at least a game yeah. on Shopify. Because like at this point. You can still win as your Shopify. The game is not over, but after this Aegis, you are clearly behind oh, yeah. in the draft here. And I go back to like, oh, the mid lane, they didn't actually catch him there, but mm -hmm. like the crit interview, they said it was a little different playing with Saberlight. It kind of reminded him a little bit of like Daryl, Ice Ice Ice, and how Saberlight sometimes is a little clowny and might throw a little bit. And I feel like in this game, this might be exactly what he was talking about. Uh -huh. as Saberlight has had been really far ahead, but has been little overconfident to get him into this position, I feel. Yeah, that, that definitely does does feel like it right now. But uh, if Rebellion is a team that would be made out of comebacks if they if they want to build one right now, because it's starting to feel like it. It has to be a, a bit of a uh, returning situation from Rebellion. They already led the game with a pretty sizable amount, brought it to a pretty even game, and even could say that bait are actually in the driver's seat. They've been the ones taking these fights. The initiations hookshot oh. is gonna miss. That's a close call. Doesn't quite connect with the hookshot. Stonebank in the front, four minutes of Aegis. Creek wave coming in, that's gonna take out the uh, tower protection, the backdoor protection, and they look for a quick kill, Aegis gone. No support, but what does bait do? Do they get the response here? Moose, Dendi, what do you have? At least with the Rage, able to get Stonebank out of harm's way. Push Wakonets on Moose. Moose is going to be in a bit of trouble here. He's going to Yule himself up to the air. His Blink is not available. Moose down, and Saberlight with his BKB leading the charge. On to Dendi he goes. Voodoo Switcher over the time being, but the Bushwhack perfectly timed from crit. Aeon Disc pops as well, blink. and he should... I was about to say he should be able to Blink out, but it runs out too early. Yeah, I thought he was going to have to blink out of the switcheroo too, but crit, you know, like, he found the problems, you know? He found Moose in the back there, got the bushwhack he's on him. He's figured the algorithm. Yeah, and with Moose dying there, they didn't really have much of a chance there, and I guess as well Stonebank. I think uh, Shopify did a really good job there, seeing the life there, sieging there, and punishing it. Stunning him right away, following up with Alina, yeah. just burning that Aegis down, and maybe Babe. They should go back to their old tactics, you know? Just like, go farm on Lodine, <laughs> let Dendi, and let Moose make an opening for you. Try not yeah. to force it. You don't need to hit buildings like this. It's not necessary. Oh, surprise Wolf on to Saberlight here. Stonebank, he's got the slows up with the open wounds and now slowly taking Saberlight down, but for sure, and surely, another kill going their way. There you go, Old Faithful right there, Saberlight this game. He's been on these side lanes by himself quite a lot, giving a lot of advantage here for Bait. Yep. Is Saberlight the one to keep Bait afloat? <laughs> but at least, look at RTZ, he's finished off a Satanic. MKB is being lined up. It's gonna be a heck of a punch coming out from this Lina. Already has the mass attack speed, and now those heavy right clicks are gonna be flying in, so every second matters in the team fight might even does bait need to adjust their team fight at all with the uh, low down hook shutting does he now need to change targets or uh what do you feel like i mean i think it'll be fine as long as he gets the target like the one fight they lost it was just lifestealer dying right and then moves getting caught uh -oh. yeah. you said about lifestealer yeah. dying i see uh i've seen this movie before potentially I mean, stone back he should be fine if he backs out or is he waiting for his team he is actually waiting for his team low down is here he's got the <laughs> he's got the bull whip the weapon, this life stealer, just keep going out at Dendi, frontlining with the Witch Doctor. Sadly, Aeon Disc is going to prevent him from doing damage. He's still got the channel up, he's being pushed away with the Tidal Wave. Phonic finds Saber Light. Lodan hits the hook shot onto the Wolf instead of onto Abed. A bit of an interruption there. Phonic just can't get close enough to finish off this Kunkka. Better resources used. 
Stonebank gets, gets to keep his life intact. And with one hero down. I, I hate to keep bringing it up. Like, Saberlight wasn't even on, like, the same screen as his team. Like, yep. dies in the back just by himself. Seven dying deaths. solo on the side lanes here. Seven really deaths. disconnected this game for them. And I think the one good fight that they did have, you know, Saberlight was playing with Arteezy. He mm. jumped stun. Arteezy followed up. They played together. They killed the Lifestealer. Gave an opportunity for Moose. I'm uh, sorry, to, uh, Crit to find Moose, right? But right now, Saberlight, he just needs to play with the team now. Yep. Bushwhack. Does fully stone back for a second, but they've got the Rubik lift. They can always disjoint the stun. Ludwink is uh, running into the uh, the issues of itemization at this point of the game. So that bushwhack, unless he hit multiple heroes, it doesn't feel super reliable as a stun anymore. At least they have some lockdown with the, the long range LSA. And you have, of course, the Slaughter Dark, which is always jump, blink in, and get the stun out. But uh, right now, Saberlight, like you said, he's been, uh, he's been outside of these fights. If he's not the frontline man, he's going to get caught somewhere. So... Uh, Close to that axe together. He's yeah, axe really close. He's so, gonna get it now. That's gonna be an. Maybe that's an item that he's been trying to get and farm it, right? But he's been getting punished a lot mm -hmm. for trying to farm that item up. So it is up now, and maybe that's his moment now to be like, all right, no more fooling around. It's time to play as a team now. Bait have been doing a really good job at grouping up and finding these pickoffs. You can't just be split pushing these side lanes anymore. You gotta give some respect to Moose and Dindy here. They're gonna yeah. kill you. Is that a is that a double AC I spy on bait? Did I see Life Stealer and Lycan both have it? So Life Stealer has AC and Lycan has yeah, AC. They have two double ACs. ACs. Uh oh, uh oh. That's not the most That's ideal the thing. Oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the fights are spreading so much that they're no longer working in unison. So I guess it gives extra potential for Stoneback. But look at the smokes are popping up all the sides. Funny come with this shape shift. Got shape shift right away. Low down does get the hook shot. He's got two heroes inside. But Saberlight's going to be coming to the rescue. Fly is going to be falling. Low down is already down. He's coming in with the buyback, returning into the fight, and so is going to be Fly. And there we go with the overgrowth. It's been stolen by Moose. He's taken a bit. Alba is going to be falling first. Dendi does drop right after that, and Stonebank. He's on the run right now. They are slowing down RTZ. Load on with the bull whip. They want to make sure that Selena is not going anywhere. Funnick, he's returning. Look how he's dropping RTZ. Just hammers them down one by one. Makes it a triple kill for himself. Yeah, I mean, RTZ right. is online for sure now. Like with that Satanic picked up. I don't think he's died since he's purchased that item now. They have no way of dealing it right now. Like Funnick tried to go in there. BKB was still up. You can't really fight right now. I think unless oh. Dendi is getting on top of him with the Maldict and they really seclude him, he's going to be a very difficult target because they, they kill the supports here. They kill the Treant, right? Yep. But like, when can you get on to this Lina? Abed ends up dying here as well. And then they have a lot of extra threats here. So it's, oh, this is the oh, opening we're looking for, actually. Maybe this is what they were looking for, Arteez. As soon as we talked about a successful fight for Rebellion, Bait response with their own. They will make sure that Saberlight and Arteezy both go down. Dendi did buy back in that last team fight. So important that he doesn't fall here. Two heroes who don't actually have the capability to buy back right away. But Rebellion, I think they're going to be in too much trouble. There is a shapeshift Lycan coming back into the game right now. So they just need to get those waves pushed in on the side of bait. Yeah, if you would have asked me at like the five minute mark if mm. we were going to have ourselves a 36 plus minute game where you know, Bait at some point would be in the driver's seat with how Funix lane and how Stonebank's lane went. I would have said no. There, there's absolutely oh, no way. Yeah. So, like, this is, like, really refreshing to see and pretty crazy, the, the comeback that Bait has, like, mounted here. And I think, ideally, that last fight is what they're looking for every single time. But it's kind of up to Arteezy in a lot of ways, mm. too, if they're going to give him that opening. I believe his BKB was on cooldown, too, there. So, like, they went really quickly after that fight to find him and picked him off there. So... If they can get on top of Arteezy, especially with an Infest Bomb with the Clockwork, that is ideal scenario. And, that and is Bash final. is online too, even easier now. Yeah, that is the final uh, Tier 2 tower fallen on the side of the Rebellion map. Bait just looking for an entry point. Lina is going to be up in five seconds, so they're going to respect Rebellion's draft. Return to the Triangle out farm, or at least try to. One minute, 20 seconds for Roche number three. Who gets it? Who gets it? I mean, mm. whoever takes a better fight, but Bait is in good position to do it. Shopify do realize that, so they're gonna smoke around the long way, and will Bait be spread out and die to this? Or can they keep the high ground and waste the smoke? 
Time will tell. Right under a scan. So, uh, bait notes something is up. Probably nobody defending the base at this point. So now, positioning is key. Well, dying. Saberlight's already on the hunt, looking at the Roche pit. Roshan is not home. With that information, they can wait a little bit longer to get this initiation out. Bait is still holding on to the dire, sorry, the Radiant Triangle. Rebellion just on the other side of the map, both having superior positions. Those are going to be very hard to intrude for either team. They don't want to let go of their high grounds. So, Bait, figuring out that they're probably somewhere in the area. Let's just go high ground. Let's do some damage onto this tier 3 tower. RTZ forced back. TPs are flying in. Bushwhack doesn't connect. It's a lot of damage in, uh, in quick succession. They're from Stonebank. And oh. they just TP'd under... Wait, they don't have vision there. Yeah, but they're going to deward it now. Roche is up. So, like, them removing that vision. Everything that Bait did there was actually really good. Oh, but there's probably going to be a fight here. Oh, this is going to be tight. If Saberlight gets the catch, but the smokes are going to be popping right away on the side of Bait. Rebellion are going to be careful on the high ground position here. They've got the Torrent slowing down Stonebank. They have the full vision on the side of Bait here at the, uh, the far end. They see this entire triangle. And again, Rebellion taking the lane instead. Bait would like to take this Roche, but right now they feel like we are being threatened the whole time. Crit. He's in the front. Acorn shot into the Roche pit. Nobody home. Bates already moved out. They're going to their vision, but unfortunately, RTC they are in a very one. dangerous position right now. Witch Doctor moving in and moves with the long range lift coming out, but they managed to interrupt it a little bit there. Four staff save. Prevents the telekinesis from bringing the Lena right into the arms of Bait. What did Rubik steal? I can actually catch that. It's got a dragon. Okay, Level so just one. a dragon site. But hey, Saberlight goes in, but the Yules comes out first. And Saberlight gonna be caught. BKB doesn't help you, sir. It's gonna be a godlike spree for Stonebank, and that is costly. 70 seconds, no Slardar. Bait looking to take Roche 3. Did he even have follow up with him with that jump? I feel like they were still stuck on the high ground on crit there, and. He seems very disconnected from the team in this yep. game number one here. And they had the they had the wharf right there in the middle of the river. They see him, and that was a precast Yules, basically. I think that was also by Moose. Yeah, Moose does have the Yules. What so a player! It had to be what from him a player. there. Yeah, Moose is having an incredible performance here on one of his. I, he has a lot of signatures, <laughs> to be honest. Like, he's a really good four player. He's been at it for a long time. Multiple master, grandmaster tier, and like the classic fours, but. Showing him he's, you know, on the meta, he uh -huh. can be one of the best. I don't know what they were saying about it on the panel, about uh, Bait not probably having a lot of chances. It's all about Shopify Rebellion. I don't know. Who yeah, got, I mean, who I got don't those guys in there? Ever since we went to casting, our panel sure yeah. downgraded quite a lot with the predictions. But what can you do? It can't what be can a caster do? and a panelist exactly. at the same time. What can you do when you can do nothing? Stonebank leading the charge as Phonics already finished off the top racks and that's a pretty generous win probability graph right there. It's It could still be true. I mean, Rebellion still has a pretty capable lineup, but right now, Bates just getting the, the faster reactions and their gameplay, their personal individual skill has been peak this game. This is the best ga bait game I've actually seen in a very, very long time. I'm impressed by what they're doing right now. Rebellion, you could just got to look in the mirror. What? Wait, what did we do this game? Can we still recover from this? We can't, but how do we achieve that end? I mean, they're playing out of their mind. Everything they're doing, I'm looking at the very small things to where they're positioning, how they're forcing TPs back. I mean, sure, they had that one slip up in the mid tier two where they did lose the egg just on stone bank there, but their movement has been tier one, honestly. And it's that's been gonna really be good. even more. The four staff pushing crit very deep in, but they don't have a follow up stun. At the telekinesis lift and the, the four snap attempt, pushing him even further. No kill. Still three minutes on the Aegis. You also have to refresh your shard on Dendi. And Phonic with the cheese. So Phonic can at least uh, feel a bit more safer when he goes into that frontline push. And now if you look at that halberd that he's picked up, that is going to make life harder for this Lina if you don't have BKB. So pre-fight or already in the, in the middle of the fight when that BKB runs out from Lina, RTZ. No hits coming out. He's also not too far off from the wolf bite as well, which will give that life stealer that extra crit, some life steal, and unobstructed move speed so he can kite in and out of the fight. So a lot of good things coming here for bait. Oh. While as Shopify Rebellion, Lino's kind of capped out here. Like yep. 
sure you can upgrade your maelstrom but that's I pretty the, much it i think the point. question fear i think the question lies who has the better crit who has the better crit <laughs> I'll take Shopify Rebellion's crit on, over any crit. All right, all right. That's a, that's a fair yeah. fair assessment. Clockwork yeah. already picking up the overclocking. That's going to give them so much vision, and that definitely makes team fighting a lot easier for bait. So much more vision av available for those uh, initiations. I hope they keep the patience here. I know it can be easy to get kind of bored because you're not able to do anything. Yep. But if you do force high ground like this, there's a chance you can be punished for it. Yeah. And it kind of seems pointless. Oh, oh no. Actually, Stonebank, very questionable moves there. Back and forth. He's going to get thrown into the X mark. He's got a Manta available if he's able to survive. But no. <sighs> Age is gone. And now the initiation. They've got an RTC. Pushed into the cogs as well. Down to the low ground. And he's going to be forced staffed all the way back to the high ground. Stonebank on the run. Funnick is also trying to get away from there. And Bates. They've lost the Aegis. They might lose another hero. Dendi with a switcheroo. He's gonna get hexed up. Stonebank comes out, tries to get some extra heal, but they got the tidal wave pushing them further. And this life stealer in trouble will fall. And Bates, they are in absolute shambles right now after that fight. Dendi almost getting right clicked down by RTZ. The crits are too much to deal with. He kills off Saberlight, but he will lose his life in the process, making it a one for two. And it might just be more crit. Can he land another bushwhack? He's already at max range. Doesn't seem to be able to catch this clockwork. And Moose. Doing a bit of, uh, well, he's not really going to rat this tower down, but at least Rebellion. A bit of a sigh of relief. Yeah, I was literally just going on a spiel about how I wish they can just be patient here with this, yep. not just go high ground. And what Immediately, happens? I'm going high ground. There's <laughs> oh, a train funny. protector as well. Oh, oh, okay. Flicker. I don't think he had vision of that. Good yep. game sense. Phonic with the little flicker. Or lock, who knows? Either way. But like, Sieging these buildings, like you have this Aegis, this can win you any engagement. You're gaining the gold advantage just by making Shopify Rebellion Turtle in their base here. I don't consider Going myself. high ground doesn't make any sense to me. Because you're not killing the building and you're playing versus mm. a tree, right? You're wasting your time essentially. In worst case scenario, this th uh, just happened. That was yep. worst case scenario. That can happen. You lose your Aegis and you lose your Life Stealer and you lose your Witch Doctor. So now Shopify back on the map here and. Unfortunately, for bait fans, they're really just throwing away a moment of dominance. Yep. Dropping the ball. Arteezy hunting Funic again. Round number two. This stun will connect with the BKB already used. Heavy damage onto Funic. The safe from Moose gets the cheese off as well as the damage doesn't get applied fast enough from Arteezy. Just not enough crits. It's only one crit. And there's the LSA again from Moose. Oh, he's going in. He's actually going in. He's going to give his life for this one unless Lowdown can be able to interrupt. He's got the hook shot and the cogs. And they're going to be moved away. RTC with the stun. He's going to keep this hook shot, this uh, clockwork down. And Saberlight, he's taking a heavy amount of damage here from Stonebank. Infest onto an illusion <laughs> of a life stealer. It is a Fata Morgana in this case, but the bushwhack from Crid, it's a big one, and they will follow into Stonebank. He's gone for 100 seconds, and Rebellion. Just like that, one team fight into another, they have recovered themselves very nicely. And it looks like this is gonna be a this is gonna be a very <laughs> very difficult situation for Bane. An exchange of abilities by Cret and Moose. Uh, they both killed each other with the same sharpshooter. Yep. Well the stolen sharpshooter killed Crit and Crit killed Moose. Yep. Bit a bit one. of a spider meme, uh, Spider-Man meme there. Yeah. It's a it's a draw. Yeah. Wild, wild west of two sharpshooters. No victor this time. No story to be told as they both fell, but we will be talking about Arteezy's push on the high ground. They could just look to end this game. Are we going straight for tier four towers? Because this is looking pretty detrimental for Bay to recover as one tier four is about to drop. In a second, they've got the glyph. Can keep themselves up a little bit longer. Hookshot does connect from Lowdown. Moose right there, but the stun from Saberlight is there. And they will finish off Moose. He's gone. 110 seconds. No Rubik. Dendi to fall as well. And just as we thought that Bay might be able to get themselves a series lead, it's taken away in Rebellion. They will take game one. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually so sad for Bay right now. I mean, I had so much hope, I thought they could win this game.